Hey guys, I'm Mark. I'm Alon. And welcome to another episode of The Next Man Up. How you doing, my friend? Dude, just jamming. Yeah. Good, good <laughs> to see you again, you as too, always. Bro, it's kind of like been raining these last couple of days. Yeah. A lot. That's a lot. A lot of rain. I'm not sure if I like that. No. But you need the rain to experience everything else, right? The the rain is a season that gives life. To... I felt like you pulled a Yoda move on me or something. <laughs> you want to pull the old wise sage? <laughs> Just, <laughs> yes, we do. We do need the rain. <laughs> you know, it's it's a it's a new thing for me. So I, I will I'll joke here a little bit, but I have often referred to myself as the the glass is half empty and leaking. So, <laughs> right? So not just half empty, but it's got a leak in it. And so to, to like see the positive, see the silver lining, so to speak, yes. it's, a, it's a new and it, it, it's new for me and something I'm trying to develop. Oh, okay. That's, that's very vulnerable of you. It is? Yeah. Gracias. I certainly don't have it all figured out. Neither do I, buddy. <laughs> Case in point. I don't know if you realize this and just let me go last time, but the last two episodes were pretty poor audio quality. Yeah. So I, I have I have to apologize for putting our listeners through that. I did not realize it until they were finished. And then I'm listening to them again as part of the releasing process and realized, uh I, you know, we've got some new equipment here mm. because of changes and, and whatnot. And, and I didn't have the equipment set up quite right. And I didn't notice it until after the fact. And so... Galaxy, world, universe, we apologize. Yes, my <laughs> humblest apologies. It's not that it was horrible. It was tolerable, but it's not as good as it could have been. And certainly put a little more effort into this time around to get it to get Absolutely. it set to where it yeah, should yeah. be so you, you guys didn't see like us like scrambling around like trying to figure out this mic thing <laughs> before we hit the record <laughs> button for this session but let me just say in all honesty i feel it was hilarious <laughs> yes yeah well again it's it's behind the scenes right the wizard isn't necessarily always what it appears on screen. There, no, there's always no. We, we are figuratively and maybe even more literally the the old man, the little old man behind the curtain of <laughs> uh, curtain of the Wizard of Oz. So anyway, my apologies to you listeners for not putting out a quality that is good as it, it w- was as good as it could have been or should have been. Be- before we move on, I, I I was I was in a bathroom and. There was a quote on the wall. Oh, right, because in the bathroom, because you find all kinds of wisdom on the bathroom. Always stalls. find right wisdom, but this one was good. Okay, all right, like it's just bear with me, crowd. Okay, I'm a little uh, nervous about where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is encouragement. Some days, the best we can may still fall short of what we would like to be able to do, but life isn't perfect on any front, and doing what we can with what we have is the most we should expect of ourselves or anyone else. Fred Rogers. Dude. Wow. The best that we had that day. As in like Mr. Forward. Rogers, Fred Rogers? No, 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 no. I I actually, I don't know. Okay. Someone wrote it. Okay. And I'm guessing that the person who wrote it uh, is not Fred Rogers. Yeah, yeah. So, they were attributing it to, to yeah, Fred, right? Yeah, so I, I don't know. Maybe it was Fred Rogers, as in Mr. Rogers. Was his first name Fred? I can't remember. Me neither. But whoever wrote this, like, dude, kudos. That's encouragement. Yeah. That's not something you expect to find scribbled on the bathroom wall. No, I know. And that's why I took a picture of it. <laughs> I washed my hands, people. I took a picture of it. <laughs> And because it was like, wow, inspiring, except for, you know, normally you find like, uh, I don't even want to explain what I find on yeah, the walls, yeah. well, it, but it's, it's it's not like an encouragement like this. Right. That was pretty cool. Right. So. Yeah. Well, it, it totally applies to what we're talking about. Heck right? yeah, man. I know we've admitted on many occasions that we don't have it all figured out. We're just trying to be real, have a conversation, get started, do something, go in a direction and... Um, 
sometimes that clarity comes, sometimes it doesn't like yeah. experience is a good teacher. Um, but it, it is, it's challenging often to admit that you don't have it all figured out. It's easy or easier to say, Oh, I'm not perfect. Yeah. It's, it's a little bit harder to admit like specific mistakes or shortcomings or acknowledge, you know, I I've learned, I learned a long time ago. There's a lot of power in being able to say, I'm sorry, but that doesn't make it any easier. Mm-mm. And, and, and it doesn't, um, I, you know, I, I guess there's, there's so much strength and power in being able to say something like, I'm sorry, that if we're just, if we can tap into that, yeah. it, it can be very liberating. Yeah. I like what you even said, like to even go deeper, like not just I'm sorry, but to actually name what you're sorry about. You know, as so when I'm in uh, public schools, I'm, I'm doing this thing called like conflict resolution, which it's not a thing, I guess. But anyway, while doing conflict resolution with kids, um, what I'm finding is one of the hardest moments is to have them name what they're mm. uh, sorry for. Yeah. You know, so it's, instead of just like, you know, I, 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 I ripped up your homework because uh, I was mad at you, it might just be like, uh, an apology might just be like, I'm sorry. But no, it's like, no, I, I am sorry that I ripped up your homework. And that wasn't cool of me. And here's why, because it affected you in this way. Yeah. And that, that's so much deeper. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Than a blanket statement. Specific, it's yeah. personal. It, it's really owning the the behavior or, or the incident or Total whatever. Owning, you know, but that... That takes what though? That takes us being open, right? And dropping our defense walls, and 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 some courage, and, some and definitely, and that well, that takes courage. Yeah, I'm not sure that that's that's easy all the time. No, it's not. <laughs> so metaphorically, mm-hmm. it's like getting naked in in front of yeah. people, right? Yeah, and who wants to do that? Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, so that that was that? that was a a slick little segue in mm. into the the topic today which, which really is this idea of being vulnerable and open but I read a I read a fantastic book recently uh, by by a guy named Patrick either Lencioni or Lencioni depending on the the pronunciation mm. I think he's Italian so Lencioni Sounds more Italian than Lencioni. Sounds like the mm. the Americanized version. Anyway, he's most known for his book, The Five Dysfunctions of a Team. It's a business-based book. It addresses teamwork and interaction and some of the dysfunctions. In fact, five of the dysfunctions that you find in a team. So he's been on my radar screen for a while as somebody to read and and that I could learn from. And and in the course of looking up him as an author, I came across another book that's actually titled Getting Naked. Hmm. And, and I'm like, oh, okay, well, what what does this mean? You know, even Googling that book, you gotta be a little bit careful. Um, but <laughs> oh, I, I looked I looked up that book and and the subtitle is a business fable about shedding the fears that get in the way of establishing good client loyalty or trust or whatever. I can't remember the exact. Oh, here it is. I got it written down. A business fable about shedding the three fears that sabotage client loyalty. Hmm. So I'm like, I'll give this a read. You know, again, haven't read any of his stuff before. And I'm early on in the book and I'm I'm just captivated by the story. So it's written like a story, like a fable. It's not principle number one, boom, 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 principle number two. It's all integrated into the story. And without ruining the, the plot, you know, we're giving too much away. It's two consulting firms, business consulting firms that have two radically different philosophies about how to engage and retain clients. Nice. And, and they come together and there's this tension between the two about what, what do we do? And in the process, um, Lencioni goes through these different fears uh, that we all face. Now, he put it in a business context, but my aha, my awareness is this goes way beyond business, yeah, way yeah. beyond. And um, so the, it, it just, he brought to life how you deal with these common fears 
in the business context, but also in the life context. Mm. And I'll just toss out yeah, these so fears and we'll see where we go. So the, the first one is the fear of losing the business, or, or I paraphrase it for our purposes, the fear of losing the relationship, mm-hmm. right? By being vulnerable, by, um, by admitting that you're not perfect or that you don't have it all together. The second fear is the fear of being embarrassed uh, or, or looking dumb, if you will, you know, I have, I have a dumb question here. You know, even being able to put your hand up and ask that dumb question yeah. that probably a bunch of other people in the room want to ask but are afraid to ask sure, it, sure. right? Yeah. It's getting past that fear of being embarrassed. And then the, the final is the fear of being inferior, which gets to our identity. Like, mm. I'm not enough because I'm not Superman or I'm not perfect or I don't have all the answers. And man, this... This was a fantastic book, and I got to the end and realized the application is so much broader than business, and it dovetails with everything we've been talking about around manhood and what strong and courageous and brave and active manhood looks like versus the fear-based or the insecure or the passive type of manhood, and um, that was a... I can't. I can't say enough man. good things about this book. Well, I, you know, it's, it's funny. Can you break down a little more of each fear? Because I can see how, like, I can see how they correlate. Uh, actually, how they connect with real life situations. Like, for instance, that first fear of losing a relationship, yeah. and, and how that might, how that might drive. Um, how we connect with people like around us. Yeah. And so in this case, as we're talking about um, uh, being a man, like what type of man we, we kind of live out, not mm-hmm. just like who we want to be mm-hmm. or who we think we are, but how we, uh, uh, how we like live out like manhood, like can it be that, you know, that we are, we have these fears like living inside of us. Like the reason why I push, actually, the reason why I push people away is because I fear losing relationships. Mm. So I, I act like I am like, you know, just this wall uh, with people. And I might press and be, uh, say things that would probably like rip people apart. Um, but because... I don't even want to step into a relationship because I know I might just lose it if you really get to know me. Mm-hmm. If you really see what's behind my mm-hmm. walls. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, and so that, that's why I'm asking, like, where where exactly is he going? Because my brain starts going all different directions yeah. uh, with that. So in the story context, in the business context, it's the consultant who is afraid that he or she might be found out ah. a, as being not all that, and as a result, will lose the relationship. They'll lose the sale. They'll lose the business. They'll lose the client, right? They get to make it. Yeah. In, yeah. in, in, many, in, many, sen- in, in many respects, yes. It, it is this fear that if I let them... Um, what, do you remember the... This is kind of a random thought. Do you remember the old um, deodorant commercial, Never Let Them See You Sweat? If they if they see me sweat, <laughs> yeah. right? You remember that? Yeah, I don't know, right, yeah, yeah. right guard yeah, or right something. Guard. I think it was. Um, you're right. If they see me sweat, then I could risk losing the business. Yeah. So yeah. it's that type of mentality. So I, I'm I am not in consulting, so I don't know what it's like from that standpoint. But I am in I'm I am in family and parenting consulting, and sometimes I feel like if if I go to one end of the spectrum where I, I just, un, I reveal all of my shortcomings to my kids. Mm. I fear that they may think of me as less than, or, or they may distance themselves from me, yeah. right? Yeah. On the other end of the spectrum, and this is where maybe these fears sort of blend and overlap, on the other end of the spectrum is, um, I fear I could push them away mm. if, I, if I do too much, I see. You know, yeah. like yeah. if I set boundaries, if I tell them no, if I get involved, if I take a more active approach, if I tell them no, 
I could lose the, I could push them yeah. away. Yeah. Does, that, does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Like that's, that's where I'm thinking the application specifically within parenting comes into play. Okay, man, fear is powerful. It is powerful. Powerful thing, man. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, when you look at it in that context, man, it's, oof. You can totally how to see how this book relates. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I mean, I've done that as I drop my wall a little bit. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Like I've done that. I've, there's been times where I'm I'm working with my kids and man, um, it's just like you know, let's take my son for instance. There's been times where like I've shied back from what I what. I think I know should have been done or should have been walked out because I don't want, I don't want to offend. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't, I don't want to, um, I don't want to not look like the cool dad. You know what I'm saying? That's right. And, and so like, and I, and I don't know, maybe there's other guys uh, out there who feel like they've been in this, this spot too with their kids, or this is something that like you fear but like I, I know I've been in that spot where like you know I, I, I fear that, and so I've I've shied back from like being who who I know I I, I am for my son, you know, and and every time though every time I just I feel like a little bit are of of me like gets shot mm -hmm. a little bit you mm -hmm. know what I mean, and then there's those there's moments like later where I go. Oh, I should have, mm -hmm. I should have wrestled fear right mm -hmm. there. I should have faced fear right there, and something better would have came about about this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And there's and there's opportunities for repair. I know that, but then you know what? There, there's all there's there's times where you know, um, we don't we don't need to go down that road. You know what I mean? We don't need to go down that road where we would have to repair later. Like we we can just step up now. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Save yourself now. the save apology your, yeah, or the repair. The, yeah. It's like, dude, nah, man, now. Yeah. And and there's then there's times where you know what I've I feel like I have like jumped up and gone no like even because I love you and because I care about you and because I want to see you go somewhere like uh, in life because I because I know I know where like I know who you are I see who you are for real mm. and what you're about to do or say or whatever doesn't add up to who you really are. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to step up and face fear right now. And I'm going to do this because I love you that much. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Man, those are, those are hard shoes to walk. You, you know what I mean? Um, but ah, do it, dads. Do it. Do it, dads. Know, know that there's, there's, there's other fathers out there who are like you and I um, who dropped the ball in that. But also know like there's hope, yeah. there's encouragement. Like, dude, we 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 can attest. Like, yeah, there's been days that we've 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 sat facing, sat with face in a, uh, uh, sorry, sat with uh, fear in the face and had that dialogue. I'm not gonna let you stop me from being a good dad to my yeah. son. Yeah, I'm not gonna do it. I'm, I'm gonna make a. And a potentially provocative statement here. This is more anecdotal, but I think generally speaking, fathers, men on this spectrum are holding back emotion, holding back vulnerability, holding back stories, holding back failures because of this fear, this fear of losing the relationship or fear of looking inferior or not looking strong. I think moms tend to tend to hold back on the parenting and the authority side of things, wanting to be the friend, wanting to be wanting so desperately to have that relationship. And maybe it's fathers interacting with sons, as I described, and mothers interacting with daughters, as I described. It's, it's like there are our two genders, our two species, as I often refer to them. Species. Comically. Wow. <laughs> um, we, we come at this we, we come at this fear from two different angles. You know, mm. the dad mm. is, it, it errs more on the side of authority and distance and e emotional, um, 
stability or what, what's the word we've used in the past? Stoic, right? The dad errs on the side of stoic. The mom with the daughter might err on the side of, I just want to be your friend. I want to be cool. I want to be one of the girls. And, and so mm. then doesn't enforce boundaries or mm. expectations or, or, or whatever. It's like we both face the same fear of leaning into the relationship, but we we come at it from a different perspective. Yeah, you know, and I, 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 that is a very provocative statement <laughs> because it, it, it classifies uh, each gender. And yeah. Like, and so um, I want to say that culture has definitely painted that. Uh, I, think e- I think we could be either, you know? Um, uh, I've seen my wife and I play both roles, mm. you know? But culture has definitely painted that. Yeah. And what are, especially, especially through media, what, it, what has been painted, at least if I can look back the last couple of generations, is that, man. It's like dad is superhero. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He is a superhero. And then all of a sudden, he's no longer superhero. Mm-hmm. You know, kids get older. They get wiser. You know, they start doing things for themselves. Um, I remember like when... My son um, hit like middle school and uh, all of a sudden he could steal the ball from me in basketball. Mm. Like it's like, oh, wait, what's going on here? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and there's this look, you know what I mean, that is given of, is there, are you not, maybe you're just getting older and you're, am I, you're no longer a superhero, <laughs> like, you know, You've, and yeah, and, then, and then us dads, we like there's there's a sense and you know again i don't want to generalize stuff but like there's a sense of like we can try the rest of our lives to recapture that yeah and because we fear losing that that's we right don't want right. we don't want to be seen by our our sons as not the mighty axe bearer mm-hmm. with the you know um paul bunyan t-shirt yeah. or yeah. or the strong dad with the you know harley bike and 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 like will beat up the whole world without breaking a sweat like i mean you, you could take whatever superheroes like style your dad uh, a dad could be and we don't want to lose that and we can spend our lives trying to recapture that but the beautiful thing is what i'm finding is like Dude, the more vulnerable I am with my kids and I really allow them to see me, like the more beautiful our relationship becomes. Yeah. It becomes more real because it's it's more authentic. It's more holistic to who you are, right? It's not just this caricature that we've talked about in the past. It's like, oh, wait, dad, you're crying. I never see you cry. Yeah. You're crying. Oh, it's okay to cry. Right. He's human. He bleeds. He bleeds. Yeah. Like, and, and I know that, I mean, like, okay, so for me, coming from my background, that's really hard because the, I, I, I have this, like, um, I have this pattern of thinking that I need to stay guarded. And so I build walls all the time, it seems. And, and if I let you in, then that means that I'm weak. Ah, and if I'm weak, that's the key word right there. You see what I'm saying? Oh yeah. If yeah, I'm yeah. weak, there's a problem. That's right. It means like I'm gonna get got. Like, that's you know right. What I'm saying? That's right. And like, oh no, I need to shore up and show that I'm strong. Right. No, no. Listen, I'm strong because I can, I can, I can be okay with being weak in this area. And and like, like, wait a minute. Let me even like take that word weak out and put it in a word that's even better. I can just be vulnerable. Yeah. I can just be open. It's not that I'm weak and like, you know, I'm this shriveled up looking old little dude. I'm like, no, I'm strong because I'm able to admit like I made a mistake. Right. I'm able to like pull back the curtain of the great and powerful odds right. and show <laughs> right. that I'm not actually great and powerful. I'm just a normal human being, just like everybody else. Right. And when my kids see that in 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 authentic like relating. When they see that, and I'm I'm being open and, and honest and vulnerable with them, man, I don't get the wow, dad, you're just smaller in my book now, right? Like I don't get that. I normally get, I really appreciate you being really open and vulnerable with me because, like, I didn't think that this was okay. And that's a huge step. It's a huge step. You know what I mean? I'm talking too much. No, no. Anyway. <laughs> I think we we culturally have bought into two lies. You just you just labeled one. 
that you labeled them both actually. The first lie is that showing any type of vulnerability is weakness. It's not strength. And what what you and I are both saying is that it's a much better expression of strength yes. and courage and the power that we have in in who we are. It's not weakness. No. It's strength. So that that's the first lie that yeah. culturally we have bought into. The second lie is if you show that weakness, then you'll be found out or people will will think less of you. You'll lose the relationship. You'll feel inferior. And, and in fact, I think if we're all honest, it doesn't always come out this way, but if we're all honest, it's more of like an attractive force yes. than it is a repellive force. Yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree. It, I mean, we, it's funny. Like, I'm actually more attracted to the wise old sage type like yeah. Yoda yeah. in um uh Star Wars episode 3 actually one w- actually one two and three like like the way that he like lives out you think he's weak but he's not right he walks around in vulnerability like right. he he with says a cane. He, with a cane he walks with a cane <laughs> but like like and then like you know it's all of a sudden it's like ah right. like, it's like oh like you are not this weak thing right you're just a person who's open yeah and you're vulnerable like you show like that you're vulnerable you show that you're just another being just like everyone else who just decided to like live out and work out these things Mm -hmm. and that's why Mm -hmm. you know a lot that's why you you know command the force yeah you command the force you know what i mean and 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 uh like stuff like that to me like helps me see like like even jesus like he's the king of kings the lord of lords right is is what we hear in scripture and in the bible yet the way he came was so oh right he didn't sit with kings no he sat in what what the, the the culture at that time would consider to be low places. Right. You know what I mean? He right. hung out. He ate food with the so-called low people. Like he didn't do normal like kingly stuff, and and he didn't wear these like you know like these kingly robes and whatever. This dude was a normal dude, and yet he was so like um he was so a- attractive to people that they flocked to him. Right. You know what I'm saying? Why? Because G- Jesus just was him. Right. He let himself be out there. Yeah. He didn't care if you like thought he was weak. Or he didn't care if you thought he was the smartest person or the dumbest person. He was like, I'm just going to live out who I am. You know what I mean? I'm going to show everyone who I really am. And that, my friends, that's the key, I think. It's like we have to like be able to be comfortable in our own skin. Yeah. To know that we're okay with with just the way we are, we're enough. You know what I mean? We're enough. Yep. And when our kids can see that, when my when my son sees that, man, it's ah, it's, it's powerful. It is very. Powerful. It's not weakness. It's powerful. It's power. That's real power. Right. You know, like yeah, it takes courage to admit. It, it takes courage to admit areas where you think you feel you you come short. It, it, yeah, but it takes even more courage just to be open. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I do. Um, it's, it takes courage to drop walls. Yeah, it takes courage to admit faults. It's like takes courage, and you can go down the line. But like, the minute that we just act like we're, everything's okay, and we throw up walls, and you know, like don't cry, like don't show weakness, right. like right. dude, we're, we're hurting ourselves, and yeah. we're hurting our kids. I agree. You know what I'm saying we're hurting our world. I'm preaching here. I'm that's, sorry, It's all good. That, so that, that's the challenge, right? Yeah, that, that's that is, the challenge that for us challenge. is to acknowledge these fears within ourselves and, and do different. Um, and there, there is a better way than culturally what we've been taught. And, yeah, and, and, and it leads right through vulnerability. It really yeah. does. That, is, that, is that like weird? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like the way to strength is through vulnerability. Right. I know. It sounds counterintuitive, <laughs> Very but counterintuitive. It, it's there. It, it's, and and it's, it's really for us to experience and figure it out. Dude, I'm gonna have to like dive more into this book. It's a good book. I recommend it. I appreciate in, you in our show it. notes, I'll yeah. I'll put a reference to it so listeners can find it. Yeah. But uh, it, it was good and it, it spurred good discussion here. Hotness, man. Yeah. I like you, dude. Thanks. Thanks for a good talk talk, good topic. 
Me, you, you yeah. the one that brought it out. Well, you, you make the engagement live. Lee, so. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. I will see you later. Sounds good. All Ad- right, world. Peace. Adios. Hey, listeners, thanks for journeying with us on this Next Man Up podcast. You know, we would love to hear from you. Maybe you have a question or an idea, perhaps a topic for us to consider. If that's you and you want to reach out to us, you can get us at feedback at thenextmanup.com. That's feedback at thenextmanup.com. Again, we'd love to hear from you. Until next time, we'll see you later. Thank you.